The Pentagon fired back at Joseph Biden, calling his claim that the Defense Department is refusing to brief the Biden transition team on key issues a patently false allegation. In a blunt statement released shortly after midnight, senior Pentagon officials said they will resume formal meetings with the Biden transition team in early January, after a holiday break agreed to by both sides. The statement came in response to claims by the Biden team that it never agreed to a holiday break. Mr. Biden made headlines on Tuesday by saying, The Defense Department won't even brief us on key issues, including a massive hack of the federal government that most security and defense officials have attributed to Russia. Joe Biden said his team isn't getting cooperation from the Defense Department and is in the dark on the extent of damage caused by the hack. Largely because of President Trump's downplaying of the incident. Mr. Biden said, Even if he doesn't take it seriously, I will. In claiming the Defense Department will not brief his team, Mr. Biden seemed to reference meetings between Pentagon and transition officials that were scheduled for last Friday but ultimately got postponed. Early Wednesday morning, the Pentagon strongly disputed Mr. Biden's version of events. Senior Defense Department officials said in comments circulated to reporters the statement that the Defense Department won't even brief us on many things is patently false. Since November 23, when the General Services Administration approved transition activities to occur, the DOD has conducted 163 interviews and 181 requests for information, which greatly exceed what the Biden Harris team originally requested. The official said, The department will continue to provide the information and meetings necessary to ensure the continuity of government. As we've said, meetings will begin again in early January, and in fact, we've begun scheduling them. The rocky transition at the Pentagon comes after President Trump made a series of major personnel moves, including the firing of former Pentagon Chief Mark Esper and installation of Acting Defense Secretary Christopher Miller in his place. Mr. Miller has stressed that he is fully cooperating with Joe Biden's team, though top transition officials say that simply isn't true. House Republicans on Thursday blocked a last minute Christmas Eve push from Democrats to rush through $2,000 stimulus checks for Americans. Democrats returned the favor by shooting down the GOP's push to revisit the level of foreign aid included in the massive spending package they passed earlier in the week. The tit for tat in the House played out after President Trump threw into doubt the $2.3 trillion spending deal, comprising $1.4 trillion in regular federal government spending for 2021 and $900 billion in relief, that landed on his desk this week. President Trump's criticism of the deal has fueled fears over a possible government shutdown and expiring pandemic protections. Democrats had hoped to rush through bigger stimulus checks after President Trump said this week that the $600 checks included in the relief package were far too small. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi said Republicans should heed President Trump's demand. The California Democrats said in a statement Today, on Christmas Eve morning, House Republicans cruelly deprived the American people of the $2,000 that the president agreed to support. If the president is serious about the $2,000 direct payments, he must call on House Republicans to end their obstruction. Mrs. Pelosi said the fight over stimulus checks was not over, vowing to hold a vote Monday in the House. She said, To vote against this bill is to deny the financial hardship that families face and to deny them the relief they need. President Trump surprised lawmakers this week when he said the spending package, which Treasury Secretary Steven Mnuchin helped carve out, is a disgrace. President Trump said lawmakers should eliminate the wasteful spending in the proposal and said they should increase the stimulus checks to $2,000 from $600. The president, however, did not indicate whether he would veto the spending package. Which, among other things, would extend unemployment benefits set to expire Saturday and keep the government funded past Monday. Senator Roy Blunt told reporters on Capitol Hill Thursday the best way out of this is for the president to sign the bill. The Missouri Republican said, I still hope that's what he decides to do. Mr. Blunt also said he doesn't think the push for $2,000 stimulus checks could garner the 60 votes needed to survive the GOP controlled Senate. House Majority Leader Steny Hoyer, Maryland Democrat, on Thursday sought to pass his party's check plan via unanimous consent request, which requires no objections from any member of the House. 
Before the House session, it was clear the effort was doomed to fail. House Minority Leader Kevin McCarthy sent a letter to his GOP colleagues Wednesday that said Democrats appear to be suffering from selective hearing. The California Republican said, They have conveniently ignored the concerns expressed by the president and shared by our constituents that we ought to re examine how our tax dollars are being spent overseas while so many of our neighbors at home are struggling to make ends meet. Representative Rob Whitman objected to the Democrats' proposal Thursday and countered with a unanimous consent request that focused on revisiting foreign aid in the spending deal. It also failed. Mr. Whitman said in a statement, The UC request I put forward today to revisit the state and foreign operations title of the Consolidated Appropriations Act was offered in an effort to re examine spending and address concerns of President Trump at a time when many believe that taxpayer dollars should go towards helping Americans most affected by the impacts of the pandemic. President Trump wished the country a Merry Christmas Friday, noting that our gatherings might look different than in years past. Due to the virus and touting the Christmas miracle of the vaccines. He wrote in a statement This Christmas, like every Christmas, is an opportunity for us to celebrate the birth of our Savior, Jesus Christ, and show our heartfelt gratitude for the abundant blessings God has bestowed upon our lives and country. This year, we come together as proud Americans, grateful for our sacred right to worship freely and to openly profess our trust in the enduring light and promise of the coming of God. He added, To all Americans, and to all our friends around the globe celebrating today, we wish you a very Merry Christmas and a peaceful and prosperous New Year. In the note, President Trump specifically thanked military families for their service, as well as first responders, law enforcement, and frontline medical workers facing the corona daily, saying their work is an example of the selfless love of God. In a video message, issued Thursday night, The President and First Lady Melania Trump celebrated the two emergency vaccines, one from Pfizer and BioNTech, the other by Moderna, as a Christmas miracle in a year with many Americans suffering.